Hi, this is Armin from Revology Analytics. This week, I wanted to demystify one of the most powerful but still underutilized or most often incorrectly used revenue analytics techniques, the revenue growth drivers analysis. It's also called a price volume mixed decomposition, although I prefer not to use that term. In this video, we'll break down the drivers of year-over-year -year net revenue growth for a fictitious company called Company ABC. And that's what you see on the screen. For this example, we want to understand how much of the year-over-year -year revenue growth was driven by our pricing actions, our ability to sell more volume, or better managing our customer and product mix. One of the fundamental mistakes that most companies make is to conduct this revenue growth drivers analysis at an aggregate level, often at the brand or product group level. These are highly aggregated methods. They actually hide much of the actionable detail that we can otherwise get by doing our analysis from the customer product level. After all, in most B2B settings, we tend to give different net prices to different customer groups for the same product. Even if our list prices are uniform across customers for some reason, we're still very likely to have a wide discount distribution resulting in different net prices for different consumers. Conducting this growth drivers analysis at this detailed customer product level allows us to truly evaluate our pricing impact and help us uncover very specific customer or product level opportunities for improvement. Now let's get back to our fictitious company ABC and understand why their net revenues declined by $310 year over year. This is year to date versus the same period last year. Pretend for the sake of this very simple example that company ABC sells two products, product one and two, to two customers, customer A and customer B. So how did we do? Well, we did a very good job raising prices, especially on product one for customer A. Notice the pricing impact was $2,700.65, almost $2,800 overall. And 3750 was actually driven by customer A and product one. Interestingly, for the same product, so product two, um, or sorry, product one for customer B, it was a huge price decrease, right? We actually decreased price substantially from last year for customer B by giving more discounts and more promotions. So how did we calculate the impact of our pricing actions on net revenue growth? Follow along as I double click on this formula real quick. And let's understand what's going on. Notice we're calculating the pricing impact, not from weighted average selling prices at the company level or at some brand level or whatnot, but we're actually calculating customer product level aggregated transactions, right? So for customer A, we calculate the pricing impact by taking the year over year difference in average selling price that you see here and we're multiplying it by the units that we sold this year. So for customer A, this means product one's year-to-date weighted average selling price was $125 that you see up here, which was actually a $25 increase from last year. Last year was $100. So this $25 difference times the 150 units that we sold this year, year-to-date, equals this $37. $150 pricing realization that we attributed to customer A for product one. We simply repeat the calculation for each customer product combination out of the results and we get the overall net price realization impact of almost $2,800. Now, let's move on to understanding the impact of volume on a revenue growth, which you see right here. Our overall volume impact was negative $329. It's mostly driven by a huge positive impact of almost $5,500 by customer A and product one, and a huge negative impact of almost $5,000 for customer B and product two. Right? We sold more stuff here, and we sold less stuff here. So how do we calculate the impact of volume on our revenue growth? The formula is simple, but it's perhaps a bit less intuitive than the pricing impact. Follow along with me again. Notice that we're calculating the volume impact, again at the detailed customer product level. And then we're aggregating the results for company ABC. For customer A, product one that you see up here, we take the difference between year-to-date and prior year year-to-date unit sales, and we multiply that difference by the prior year's 
weighted average selling price of our entire portfolio, right? For company ABC. This is a, a more difficult concept to grasp. Why are we multiplying it by last year's average selling price for the entire company? Well, for one, we need to use last year's price to understand the impact of volume and not this year's price. But two, by using a weighted average price of our entire portfolio as the multiplier, we're able to calculate a meaningful and intuitive customer and product mix impact later on. So again, for this example, for product one, customer A, we increased our unit sales by 50 units from 100 to 150 this year. This 50 unit increase is then multiplied by the weighted average price of our total portfolio last year, which was $110, $109.60 to be exact. This results in the actual volume impact of $5,500, right? And we repeat the same exact thing for each customer product combination. We added the results and we get the dilutive impact of volume of negative $329 in our revenue growth. Now, onto our missing piece from the revenue growth drivers analysis, the impact of customer and product mix. Follow along as this one is also a bit tricky to conceptualize, but as you'll find out, it's actually pretty intuitive. Our total mix impact was negative, almost negative $2,800 for company A. This can happen for two reasons. This year, we had a higher sales mix of customer product combinations that are typically lower priced than our overall portfolio, or the opposite, right? We had a lower sales mix of customer product combinations that are typically higher priced than our overall portfolio. Let's look at how it's calculated in detail. I'm going to double click on the first customer example so you can kind of see what it's, what it's doing. Step one, for each customer product pairing, we calculate the unit sales mix in the prior period for us to see here today last year, as well as the current period. For customer A and product one, this means a year to date, last year, sales mix of 43% that you see up here, and a current sales mix of 66% year to date that you see here. Right? So two out of three units sold for the entire company were actually product one sales to customer A. Step two, we calculate how many units we would have sold this year had our sales mix remained unchanged from last year. Again, for our customer product example, this means we would have sold 99 units this year had our unit sales mix remained the same at 43% from last year. So how do we calculate this? We simply multiplied the 43% sales mix from last year with the total unit sales for company ABC of 20, uh, 228 units. Okay. Step three, we calculate how many more units we sold this year compared to what would have been justified by our historical sales mix. So it's a hypothetical unit sales, if you will, right? For our example, this means we sold 51 more units of product one to customer A compared to what our historical sales mix would have dictated. The 51 is the difference between the 150 that we actually sold versus the 99 that we hypothetically would have sold if, if the mix was flat from last year. Okay. And then lastly, step four, we multiply this unit difference with the difference between last year's weighted average selling price for customer A and product one and company ABC overall portfolio price. Okay. This last step calculates the impact of your customer product mix on, our, on, on your revenue growth. In our example, this means multiplying this 51 with negative $10, negative $9.60 to be exact, to get to a negative $494 mix impact that you see here for customer A and product one. And again, repeat the same example for each customer product combination, add, the, add up the results, and that's how you get negative, almost negative $2,800. In plain English, what happened to customer A and product one? Well, we sold a higher share of cheaper stuff, right, for company ABC as a percentage of our total unit sales, which hurt our revenue growth. Our unit sales mix increased by 22% year over year for product one sales to customer A. It went from 43% to, to 66%, right? 
or 23% increase. This mixed shift drove 51 more units for our company, right, from a customer product bearing that is actually $10 cheaper than our overall portfolio. So, of course, it's going to be dilutive to our net revenues. If product one was sold, let's say at $130 historically to customer A instead of this $100, then this would have actually been a positive mix impact on company ABC. The beauty of this approach is that all these bottom-up calculations can be aggregated and they can be sliced and diced whichever way we need to in order to explain the drivers of our revenue growth or revenue decreases. On the right side, if I, if I scroll um, on, the, on this demo sheet, you'll notice the aggregated results at the country and the product level. So for example, for company ABC, the US business had a positive $4,600 impact through volume, positive $171 impact through mix, uh, mix management, and a positive net price realization of uh, almost $3,800, okay? For Canada, it's a much different story, right? It was highly dilutive through their efforts. And so the same logic can be extended to product and customer level summaries. And of course, if we're explaining product level revenue growth drivers, right? Where you're trying to explain what happened to product level revenues this year versus last year, or maybe this year versus, versus a budget, right? When you're, when you're talking about products for the mix portion, you'll be talking about geographic and customer mix impacts. If you're explaining customer level revenue growth drivers, we'll talk about geographic and product mix and so forth. Of course, if you want to explain the revenue growth drivers, not just for company ABC, but you want to drill down and you want to understand the drivers for the US segment only, well, the basis for your analysis is going to be the US only. You can just repeat these calculations and rerun the driver's analysis at that particular level. Now, imagine you have millions of customer product pairings for your company. There's a common misconception out there that you actually need expensive turnkey software to produce revenue bridges and price and volume and mix driver analysis for you. Nowadays, you can actually perform these things in Excel, right? In Excel's Power Pivot quite easily. But you can use a self-serve BI tool like Power BI, Tableau, or Code it out in R or Python. Regardless of what tool you use, I encourage everyone to just start building these capabilities for your companies because it allows you to explain with surgical precision why revenues are up and down and where the biggest opportunities for revenue increases are in terms of better mix management, better pricing, or getting more distribution as an example to increase volumes. You can find the demo Excel worksheet used in this video by signing up for our free revenue growth analytics resources on revologyanalytics.com forward slash revenue analytics tools.